just happened. E3, the triple E, the electronic triple. Hello, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome to episode 19, the E3 discussions That's right. episode. That's A very yep. special show we have for you guys today. I don't know how we're gonna manage to keep this under an hour, even under an hour and a half, but just brace yourselves, we're gonna be trying our hardest on this one. Welcome to Ooh. the Gaming Frontier Podcast. My name is Adolfo Aire, and I'm your host for today's show. Adolfo. For today's show, I'm sorry, I'm just too excited <laughs> for all yeah, of this. We, I'm, we just looking at, I'm just looking at the outline for the show, and it's just so it's crazy. Huge. Yeah, and it's I'm getting huge. distracted by that. I'm joined, as always, ladies and gentlemen, by my buddy, the good old Guillermo Biscayno. Old. The good old. Yes, you're old. <laughs> Hello, you, yeah, you I'm, I'm good, I'm good, as you said, it's E3 week, and it, it might be a week away now in, in the past, but it's still very much in our minds, and you can still feel the vibe, yes, in a way. yes, you can, the excitement, yeah. the hype, uh, of hope. course, yeah, yeah, it's it's our, as, as you said last show, it's our Christmas, and, and excitement, it's real, and it's, it's still going strong, so, yeah, I'm very excited to talk about all things E3 this show, uh, we'll see if we can manage to put it all we'll try, we'll try. In, in a single show, but But we'll try, we'll try, but at least you can be sure that it's going to be an entertaining one. So stay here, stay here for as long as this show lasts. And yeah, yeah, very excited. This podcast is part of Gaming Frontier's YouTube channel where you can find gaming related content throughout the week. The Gaming Frontier podcast is a weekly show where the two of us, non-experts, but very hardcore gaming fans, yes. discuss the latest news in the gaming industry, our thoughts, predictions, and in short, everything related to gaming, video games, and this beautiful entertainment. And speaking of entertainment, yes. as we just said, Electronic Entertainment Expo just happened in Los Angeles, California, and there was a lot of news as every single year. So now... Let, let me tell you how we're going to be doing this. So we're going to be going through each of the five presentations. The the um, I'm sorry, the, no, just five. Oh, I'm, I just realized. Damn, I just realized You're that I some, forgot to put on the outline the Sony yeah, thing. Yeah, <laughs> I just noticed it. <laughs> well, so, oops. And that's, I think that's a, a big important one right <laughs> so a anyways anyways that's not a big deal i think we both yeah, can have, have that on the fly absolutely absolutely we have a sony's presentation very um much in in mind and, absolutely yeah. because it was such a good thing but we we're gonna get that to that later so we're gonna be going through each of the six main presentations yes. in the order that they went through on the on last during last week mm -hmm. and we're gonna be discussing each uh, briefly each of the of the games and topics and anything that was showcased on each of these conferences in the order that they were that they were uh, presented right right so let's start with the first the first presentation the first media briefing which was EA's it was EA play that happened on Sunday so EA started e3 for almost for for every one of us and they had I think a, a decent showing, nothing, yeah. nothing too spectacular, but some very interesting games. So first of all, Titanfall 2. Wow, yeah. um, I'm looking forward to it. it. It looks, it looks like more Titanfall, but with everything that people asked for the first iteration of the game, right? right? Yeah, it looks, it looks good. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, as as you said before, uh, I I go on uh, big. Shout out and props to EA, you know, yeah. given that their conference last year, their briefing last year was uh, very underwhelming, very, you know, yeah. a little under the rocks. Uh, the play presentation, the, you know, 30 something minutes of nothing pretty much there <laughs> in the middle. Uh, this year was very, very much an improvement upon that. Uh, I think it was a good idea for them to go a little more independent on this one and do their own kind of thing. And, yeah. You know, play with this teleconference thing that was, I'm not entirely convinced that it was really live and not a, a pre-recorded thing that they just, you know, played on top of the of the presentation. I don't know. I, don't know. I, 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 I could be wrong. It could be a, a live thing. And if it's the case, then it was a very cool show. Yeah. Uh, Titanfall 2, yes, as you said, it's 
indeed what I, at least what I wanted from Titanfall 1, the original. Yeah. Uh, single player campaign, uh, yep. the same exact, uh, the exact same uh, thrilling multiplayer, multiplayer experience, very mobile, very, uh, you know, this verticality to the levels and the Titans and how they interact with, you know, on foot combat and on Titan combat. And I think it was very exciting, very cool and very good news. And I think Respawn, uh, which I think we can all agree is really Infinity Ward on these guys. Yeah. Uh, they, I, I really like how they work. I really like the games they do and they've done uh, on, on, you know, on their history. The first Call of Duty is Modern Warfare 1 and 2 and all that. So I think it's a good track record and I think it's a good track record to have when you want to do a good first-person shooter. And I, I have good hopes for Titanfall. Titanfall yeah. 1 was not disappointing, but was lacking so much content that it just died out. You know, the, yeah. it didn't burn for long. Titanfall 2 has the chance to, you know, achieve what that what Titanfall 1 couldn't, which is to last a little bit longer, be a first person shooter that it's more sorry, that's alive for a little while longer, not just 2 or 3 months. Uh so yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. The trailer was good, I think. The team yeah. player thingy. Yeah, it, yeah, it it looked it looked it looked fun. It yeah. looked like a lot of fun and it definitely looks like Title for one, but maybe bigger, yes, better, more badass. Like it's, it's just Title for didn't need any improvements on the gameplay. It just needed yeah. improvements on content, and and they had they had a really good chance on improving up on that. And I I I think that they're listening to that feedback, and I'm very excited for that. And you can sign up for the closed beta oh, that's for right. the yeah. for the multiplayer stress test that is happening later this um this year. I I already did because I, I I really want to try this. And it's coming on October, so this year very very soon. I didn't expect that because yeah. I honestly expected that t expect Titanfall to come late later or during the first quarter or second quarter of next year, not this year because of Battlefield One. But it's coming this year, so looking forward to that. Then EA talked about esports and how they're pushing on esports. I think we've talked um, we've talked before about esports and uh, uh, here on the show and how esports is becoming a very important thing a very big thing for gaming and yeah. and the, the gaming landscape and and i think i'm not sure if if e3 is really the place in uh, to talk about it d during a conference but it's I, I just like that ea is 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 putting an effort on esports later one of my most anticipated games uh, lo looking forward on the next year mass effect andromeda of course was yes showed on the on the on the press conference however they showed a lot less than i really expected i was expecting yeah. a big i don't know like five 10, even 15 minute d gameplay demo of the game, and that didn't happen. And I was a bit disappointed by that, but we got a look at the protagonist, at the female protagonist of right. yeah. of, of the game, with a female writer. A writer, yeah. Yeah, we got a confirmation. Very cool last name, I think. Yeah, we got a confirmation yeah. that's, that's the last name that's a, of, of this new Mass Effect, yeah. uh, maybe trilogy, series, yeah. whatever. It's Ryder. We got a look at the female version of mm -hmm. Ryder. Looks cool. Yeah. We got uh, a look at, at an Osari. Yes. We got some glimpses here and there in the and galaxy. The Krogan, right? Yeah, and the environments and all the stuff. Yeah. It, it all looks super cool, but it left me wanting more. And yes. not, not in a good sense. Not in, not, not in a sense that I, I was so hyped about it, but I was like, show me more. Like, that's not enough. Especially because the game is... The game is Kind of, Fairly kind of around close the corner. Release, yeah. So, but we got to see some of that. We're, I think we're both very, very excited for <laughs> for Mass Effect Andromeda. We're both Absolutely. big fans of the original trilogy, and that's something very, very cool to look forward to. And EA has an amazing portfolio thing at this very moment. And Mass Effect, for me, is still the title, the titan, and on and all of this portfolio of franchises that they have. That EA has? Yeah. Yes. Even yeah, about I mean... Titanfall because the Titan, you know, and... <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. So, yeah, yeah. Mass Effect Andromeda <laughs> was showcased and it looks super, super cool. But we are looking forward to, to more of this game because we want to see more gameplay, more missions, yeah. a lot more of that. Also, EA talked about uh, an initiative that I thought was very nice called Play to Give. They just made a brief mention of this. So, it's uh, it's this, this consists of in-game challenges 
that lead to charitable donations. Yeah. So you basically can put challenges on some of the games, including Battlefield 1, which will in turn uh, create char- create donations for charity on behalf of EA. And I think that, that's, that's cool. Sure. I mean, yeah. that's... I mean, that's I think that's mostly a PR thing, whatever. I mean, you, you can argue for many things, but I think charity is always nice. Yeah. That, like having someone with money put some of that money into into a social cause that we all care about. I think that, that, that that's cool. That's I yeah. like that. Yeah. I like that. Sure. And I think that's that that was a nice gesture to 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 talk about. Then. Normally, I wouldn't talk about this because they always have their big Madden, FIFA, NHL, yeah. their EA Sports showcase, which, to be honest, I don't care about. I don't care much about. But I want to talk about one thing out of all this, which is FIFA. FIFA yeah. 17. FIFA 17, The Journey. Yes. So this caught my attention because it seems – well, one, it, it doesn't seem, but it, it's, this is happening. The new FIFA game is going to have a single-player story. Yeah. Like a single player campaign similar to the goal movie. Yeah. Where you follow <laughs> <guess>. yeah. <laughs> the story of a soccer player yeah. just going up and up and a bit, the, a bit of yeah. drama yeah. here and of there. Course. Yeah. All the ups and ups and downs of, of yeah. you know what a, a football career is and how it's managed and how it matters what you do outside mm-hmm. of the pitch as well as what you do inside of it. Yeah. So I think it's cool. I mean, I think it's a very nice addition. I think it's something I mean, story mode or, or uh, you know, sort of like a story mode has always been there in the mm-hmm. way of uh, of you being the the DT, the, the you know technical director of the of your yeah. of your of your team, the coach, the coach, yeah, yeah. Uh, or a player and just you know playing as your player mm-hmm. for for a certain span of time through a career. But this is more of a like an a actual story, story with yeah. a with an actual character which mm-hmm. is already like fixed. Yeah, is this young, uh, I, I guess British guy. Uh, you know, starting out his career and all that. So I think it's cool. I think it's a very nice, cool new addition. This now feels more innovative, mm-hmm. you know, when yeah. compared to the rest yeah. of plethora of games that uh, FIFA has. So yeah. great. I mean, cool, very cool. Yeah, I'm not a FIFA player, but this this aspect of the game caught my attention as yeah. a gamer myself. Sure. And I may even try it. I don't know if 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 it ever goes down in price I know, I, I'm attracted to that sort of thing right. more than to the traditional FIFA gameplay because I'm not a fan of it I know there are a lot of people who really enjoy these games not myself not, not that much I mean but this looks nice yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 this looks very very attractive yeah. then EA talked about a new program called EA Originals which yes. is which is very very interesting and this is of this is targeted towards Indies, yes, and indie games yeah. and indie studios. It, it's it, that's basically a publishing program from EA, where you as an indie developer can submit your game to this program and have. And if EA likes it and approves it, they can uh, publish your game and, and showcase the game, help you with marketing right. and a lot yeah. of and a lot of stuff, and basically act as your publisher. Yes, and it's and also they talked about how it is very friendly with developers in the in the sense that developers do keep most of the revenues of the games yeah. and i mean I, I haven't read the 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 policies and the the small letters that all, all of the course, intricacies yeah. of this thing but the idea i like it the yeah, idea sure. is very, very cool and they showed the first uh game yeah that is part of this program Fake. which is kind of um which is which is kind of a follow-up in in the sense of an indie game published by EA yeah. to Unravel. Unravel right. was last year. Now they showed a 3D sort of platformer called Fe, 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 Fe. Fe. It's F E. Right. Yeah. I'm not sure of the pronunciation of that. In, in Fe. Fe. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it looked cool. It's a yeah. it's sort of a low mid poly title, 3D title. With some very cool lining effects. Yes, I liked how it looked. A very interesting uh, uh, color palette. Yeah, they have in and there. very musical oriented as well. Yeah, saw, and yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's cool. Yeah, as you said, uh, I think for both of this, for your originals and for Fey, Fee, or I'm sorry, Fee developer I, guys. Yeah. I think yeah, it's a very cool yeah. uh, you know follow up on what Unravel was last year, and I think EA saw that it worked. Mm-hmm. That you know they can grab a. a you know, a small indie studio and, and bring them to the yeah. big leagues in a way. And I think it's a very nice publishing thing they're doing. It's good yeah. PR for them. It's good for studios that are under this, you know, veil of, of this program. 
Uh, I like it. I really like yeah. it a lot. Uh, I think it's very nice, and if it gives more developers the chance and a spotlight yeah. every now and then, then that's you know more than welcome. I think there's a yeah. lot of, of talent out there that's not being showcased because you know a million reasons, right? Mm-hmm. Geographical, economical, yeah. uh, social, a hundred million reasons. So I think this is very cool. I think it's a great program, and yeah, Fee seems like a, an interesting game. I'm not particularly uh, you know drawn to it, maybe. But I, I do see the the, the appeal and the potential. Yeah. So, yeah, I, very cool. I They're really following like it. both Sony's and Microsoft footsteps in their indie publishing yeah, program. Sure. And that expands their portfolio, and I think they saw that, and that's nice. Yes. That's, that's nice to have. That's more options for indie developers that are looking for some, I don't know, for some investment or some funding, Absolutely. Yeah. some help with their games. Yeah. Right? And that, as, that's... as you mentioned, I think, I think they did state it that they wanted, not, not wanted, sorry, but that they intended to give all of the profits not just a cut like all of the profit go back to the to the um, studio that developed the game uh which if it's true then that's very cool i mean it's just help it's not really that much i mean it's gonna have the ea name in there right the brand somewhere in there but still i I mean help with marketing and and publishing that's a huge help absolutely Yeah. yeah So, yeah, very cool. Absolutely. That's a huge boost for any indie developer. So, if you're an indie developer and you didn't know about this program before, check it out. EA Originals. It yes. may be your savior. It may, yeah. it may save your company yeah, yeah. and your project, definitely. You might if you are into, into problems, if yes. you're having some issues. So, uh, later, EA talked about Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> a, a small thing called Star Wars. You might know about you it. You might know about it. You might have heard about this. There's a couple movies there somewhere. Sky Skywalker dude. Yeah. And some yeah. Uh, some monks. Swords, some uh, some colored swords. Sword played and, and monks, yeah. magical monks. Absolutely. So Star Wars, uh, EA EA has a license for development of B- Star Wars video games. Yes. And they are working on a shit ton of Star Wars <laughs> yeah. games. Yeah. But they didn't show any of those. Which like, is weird, yeah. They showed just a few glimpses of the development of these Star Wars games. I think about Respawn is working on, on one, one yes. and um, Visceral and Visceral games. Yes. I mean, uh, among others, but those yeah. are like the two big ones. And they showed some mocap of some star, some lightsaber duels yeah. uh, happening, mm-hmm. which looks freaking awesome. Yeah, <laughs> they look so cool. Greed, yeah. Too bad that we didn't we didn't really see more of that. And I think a lot of these games are coming way later than we want them than, to. than we want yeah. them to be. But and, and that's the reason I think we we didn't see any of those. But it's cool to know that they exist. And yeah. yeah, yeah. I think right now it's a, it's 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 a good time to be a Star Wars fan again. Of course, yeah, Star, yeah. Star Wars so exactly. kind of went into a dark age in gaming, and I think it's now coming back and it can come back very very strongly. Strongly, yeah, I agree. I mean, not just cool. in gaming. I think it went into a dark age in everything, everything. like until, you know, last year the, the latest episode yeah. 7 came out and it just went boom, right? It, yeah. it went right straight out on top of the charts mm-hmm. and Star Wars is a franchise and a universe that's very vast and very Uh, adaptable to make so many different types of games, so many different types of stories and even movies. And like, I mean, they're already exploiting this in the movie side of things. But in terms of games, I mean, even with the expanded universe a couple years back or, uh, you know, 10 years back, uh, they made great games with, you know, Jedi Academy mm-hmm. saga, the Jedi Outcast saga, the, the so many different sagas that they made of, of gaming and Battlefront, the original Battlefronts, uh, which were very, very cool games that just, That we're in that universe, right? In Star Wars. So I think it's a very good and exploitable universe to to have. EA has a great opportunity here with Star Wars to make all types of games. And I think they're making them. Yeah. Motive One is working on, on the new Battlefront. We all know that. Uh, now Respawn and, and Visceral are working on action-packed uh, type of games. And there are a lot of whole other studios working on mobile games, on... Uh, RTSs on a million different types of, of yeah. games that are I, I like it I mean I, I I hope I just hope sorry that they don't flood the market with Star Wars games at one point so that it's not exhausting for the consumer yeah they just gotta pace them right yes exactly but if they do then it's it's great to have a, a you know a continuation or a continuum of a Star Wars game every now and then yeah. Star Wars games 
so yeah, I, I think it's it's great. And I hope EA knows how to manage them. That's all awesome. I can say about yeah, it. Yeah, that's very, very exciting stuff. And finally, EA closed their presentation with Battlefield 1. Oh, which looks great. Their biggest, their, their biggest title yeah. for this year. Funny thing, coming a week apart from Titanfall 2. That's, yeah. That's super weird. But anyways, yeah. the game, they showed a gameplay trailer, which looks so god. Damn, awesome! <laughs> yeah. I got so hyped with yes, that trailer did. and the zeppelin just burning and just falling. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, even better than the first one, right? I yeah, mean, so the good. first trailer was good, but this one was this one, exhilarating. This it was, was great. Yeah, this this one really had me up, and yeah, seeing that trailer made me want to play the game like, Absolutely. right now. Yes. and they they finished the show and they they had a stream. Yeah, they they, they streamed two, I think, two full matches of the game. Yeah, around an hour, hour and a half. Yeah, and with I, I, I don't get why they did this because they had <laughs> they had a lot of celebrities. Yeah, which and being honest with you, I I don't think I I knew any one of those because a lot Not of many DJs, of them. rappers. Yeah, and I I don't I don't basketball player there. I, I I I don't follow any of those. Right, but just just a quick question to you, like why did you chose those people and not? gamer gaming influencers right yeah. why, why did you have a basketball player and djs and rappers and not i don't know pewdiepie right markiplier, markiplier uh, boogeyman the, the, yeah the, those mm-hmm. kind of people yeah it would make more Matt sense Pat. i think yeah exactly people like that team and r and uh and i even and, and i even LA. think I, I, i'm not sure right but i didn't think that those would cost you even less money Probably bringing yeah. those other dudes, right? And and gamers like me, we I would stay to watch a full stream if I saw MadPad over there. Yeah, or people like right. that. Because 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 I saw those guys and I was like, I turned it off and then I watched the I watched the gameplay later. Yeah, because I didn't watch the. Live the only stream. one I knew from all that, you know, all all that people was um, uh, Mayor Nelson. Was the only one I oh, recognized. Yeah, he was, he yeah. was in one of the but, teams. But he's a gamer. He's a gamer, he's right? Like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm totally on board with, with what you're saying. Yeah, I think it would have been a much better... I mean, of course, yeah, give uh, one or two or three or five spots total to, you know, celebrities and, and yeah, yeah, basketball players and what you want. But most of your, you know, your, the base of your team have it be known players, known gamers that yeah, are influencers. That's your audience, and, exactly. That's yeah. your audience. The people, the people that are watching the, the stream, that are watching E3, are the people that follow these guys on exactly, YouTube. Exactly, yes. So that, that, doesn't, that didn't make any sense to me at all. And, and the red car... I don't know. It was so oh, awkward, yeah. boring, yeah. totally cringe worthy. Yeah. yeah, that was a shame to watch. Yes, that was embarrassing, and yeah, that that wasn't fun at all. But the gameplay looks so much cool, yeah. and yeah. just the fact that the sapling can burn down and fall into the into the map, and wherever it falls, it destroys. Yes, it destroys <laughs> everything that it falls on top of. Yeah, and yes. the wreckage that the breeze of the the of the sapling itself, the yeah, stays on the map and yes. it changes <laughs> the map in that way. That's so god, yeah, that cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so impressive. That's technology, man. That that's that's really the power of. What's the what's the name of the engine? Uh, it's Frostbite. Frostbite. Yeah, that, that's just the power of Frostbite to the fullest that we've ever seen. That's yes. just that looks so so cool. I mean, and Evolution was like one level. This is an entirely new thing, an evolution absolutely. of that, right? Absolutely. It, and we have tanks, we have motorcycles, we have yeah, a lot of cool weapons. Good, everything, everything that game. I mean, the is, fact that the Zeppelin it's a vehicle and that you can you know direct it and 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 move it and and use it and impressive. it's like yeah it's so impressive that's right? impressive i think we're both looking forward yeah, absolutely. to that game yeah. that it's probably that to for me that and Titanfall 2 with what we see with what we what we've seen and what we saw at the conference those are the highlights for me of the press conference. Yeah, yeah. Mass Effect is still my most anticipated game, but we didn't see much a lot of that. Of that. So yeah, just just EA didn't have a very good show. EA didn't have like a very impactful showing because they didn't have much surprises and they under deliver in many ways in, with what they sh- with what they showed. Mm-hmm. But their portfolio is one of the strongest. Oh yeah, and I, and I do think that EA's portfolio right now is the strongest it's ever been. Yeah, so it's, I agree. It's, it's it's very 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 exciting. Absolutely. Jumping to the same day to Bethesda. Yeah, that Bethesda, evening. Bethesda mm-hmm. had a conference, their second conference ever. Yeah. They um, it was a good a good showing. Absolutely. Not as solid. Not as, yeah, very solid one. Not as 
I don't know, impressive or exciting as last year because they, they didn't have a new Doom or a new Fallout, right? Right. But they, they have a, they had a few surprises and, and games here and there. Yeah. And they actually began the show with a surprise. Quake is coming back. <laughs> coming back. And Quake is a big thing. It's, yeah. This is called Quake Champions. It's a shooter, of course, coming to PC. And um, not much details. We saw uh, we saw a CGI, a CGI trailer. trailer yeah. CGI mm -hmm. trailer. Looks... I mean, the concept, we, we know what Quake is, right? And there's a lot of potential with that. Absolutely. Especially after what, how they pull off Doom. So uh, this is we'll be, we'll be seeing more of this on QuakeCon. Yes. Later this year, coming only to PC. But um, Quake fans, I'm sure, are looking forward to this. That, yeah. was, that, was, that was a neat surprise. Yes. Yeah. I, I didn't expect that. Yeah, Quake I, I is remember... still a very, uh, it's a huge yeah. game still up to Absolutely. now, up to date. And I, I remember I was watching IGN's pre-show. Right. And I think it was Jerry Petty. He, he's a big Quake fan. And someone, somebody asked him, oh, would you like to see Quake come back? And he went crazy on the pre-show. Like, he really wanted that, but he was <laughs> sure that wouldn't happen. And then, and the, then, and then it, the show the first began, thing they did. and that's the first thing. That, and, <laughs> nice. and then I remember I was the post show, and that deal was just hyperventilating. Right? <laughs> right. So th that, that's that's super super that's super very nice. cool. That's, that's super very nice. nice. Then they talked about Elder Scrolls Legends. Yeah. Which is it's mm, a card game. Yeah, I mean not my kind of thing, right. but. I know many people are into that. Yes. And, well, speaking of car games, I want to talk about one, but that's later. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, that's later. That's something that that I'm excited about. But yes. Yeah, they talked about this. Then they showed some Fallout 4 and Fallout Shelter updates. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I mean, I, 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 I don't play any of those games at all. But you're a Fallout 4 player, right? Yeah, so I am. What do you think about the Fallout 4 updates? <sighs> I think it's cool. I think it's, it's, it's nice that they are keeping, uh, you know, that game in the radar that are not just forgetting about it. I mean, oh, Bethesda has always been that kind of studio that never leaves any, any game in the dark or any game unsupported. We see still support for Skyrim, and that game, it's almost five years old. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm happy to see that they keep you know supporting and giving more, more content to Fallout yeah. uh, gamers. I mean, the mods was a great addition that just came live a few months back. Or weeks, even. I think PlayStation just got them, like, a couple weeks ago. Uh, so, you know, support for Fallout is great. And, and, you know, this continued support of the game, it's, it's even better. I mean, for Fallout Shelter, I have no real input. I don't play the game. I don't play that much mobile. Uh, but Fallout 4, I think it's great. I think it's it's very Absolutely. interesting. And, yeah, looking forward to, to more content coming it's on. It's exciting, right? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, and then um, speaking of Skyrim, you said you, just, you said the word Skyrim. Skyrim is coming uh, to this well, gen. Not... Yeah, it's coming exactly. to the PS4 and Xbox One remastered, better textures, better lighting effects. It's it's just modernized exactly uh, visually vi visually, and um, it's also coming with mod support for consoles. Yeah, which and, is a new um, thing, and it's great. And I'm looking forward to it because yeah. I I didn't I didn't got to play to fully play the game of last gen because i just played i don't know five ten hours and most of the game to nothing <laughs> yeah that's absolutely nothing because yeah. i because I, I i got busy with other stuff and i, I never got a chance to actually focus on right. that game for a month two or three months yeah. so but i want to but i now I have more time to play because i'm not i'm out of school right and um yeah, funny thing, right? That my professional life gives me more freedom and more free <laughs> yeah. time than my than my school life. Absolutely, then. yeah. So yeah, so now I have more time, and I want to get into this and play Skyrim Remaster. So yeah, I think I'm 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 picking this up. I'm not sure if if the moment it it it, it launches, but I'm very very looking forward to it. Then we got a, a look, a quick look at Dishonor Two, which was uh, kind of their big their big title for the yeah. conference. We're, we're, we're going to get back to this later. They then show Prey. A, bit, a surprise. It was a surprise. Yes. Because Prey, Prey is coming back. And Prey is a game that was a bit overlooked. Yeah. Last generation. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has sort of a following. Sort of a cult following. Yeah. Uh, sort of a lot of people like it. And it's coming back. But also, it doesn't look a lot like the original Prey. Not at but all. But we didn't see really... Anything. Anything about the game. We just saw a CGI trailer, yep. which is... Which, whoa, was it CGI or was it... 
No, it was CGI. I, it was CGI. Yeah, no way that was that was. Because I, I I don't remember. I, it, I, it's, in game. It's it's blurry to me right now, mm -hmm. but it's coming back. That's yeah. that's cool. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. At least as, as a concept, the game looks very yeah. interesting. Very very much just, interesting. Just just uh, knowing that, well, that the game is coming back, right? Yeah. Just the fact that it's 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 praise being revived and that Bethesda is picking that up from their portfolio of franchises and IPs. It's, it's, it's very, very cool. Then Doom has some new updates in terms yeah. of free updates and the new expansion, from the new multiplayer expansion. And they said that all updates for Snap Map are coming free for all players. Yeah. That's nice. That's cool. Yeah. And they and the updates, for the multiplayer expansions just consists of maps and some other stuff yeah. that that don't include snap maps so it's every snap map update is free for players and they had a free demo during last week available yeah. for all platforms right yeah which was cool uh, i downloaded it i played it and it was yeah it was, it nice. was, cool. it was okay. yeah it was doom right it was doom. It, cool. was, it, it was nice it was Very nice. nice okay um some other scrolls online updates and and i'm not following that game much at all yeah i've heard good things about it a very I've rocky heard... start and then it got yeah. better over time yeah, to to me, it's it, it's similar in that way to Final Fantasy XIV, because you get yes, a very rocky start, exactly, a very rocky start, and yeah. now it's super cool. So now it's a super good game. Yeah, and they talk a bit, a bit about that, and it's launching in Japan right now. Okay, that's cool mm -hmm. for all you Japanese gamers that you're watching this. Other scores online coming to your <laughs> territory. That's very, very cool. Yes, Doom and Fallout Four are coming to VR, which is very interesting. That that's what I what, what got me very very hyped about this conference. But you know, especially Fallout. I mean, Doom. I th I guess it it's uh, I can see it happening. But yeah. Fallout. I think it's a very cool because it's so heavy on exploration. It's it would be such a cool thing to have that on on a VR environment. Like you can actually walk around the wasteland and walk around the. Uh, Boston in this case, and, and look at your peep boy, and, and choose it with you know your actual hands and moving the the knobs and, and stuff. I'm not exactly sure if that's the way that peep boy is gonna work on VR, but at least you know being able to look around and grab things and, and move and, and explore the wasteland, it's very it's very interesting, very very hyping, very very. I mean, this is the kind of VR experience that I want to get. Maybe I didn't thought Fallout when VR came out. But a Fallout esque game, and now that Fallout is actually coming to VR, it's exciting because it's a very much triple A game, huge in fan base and in, in following, and coming to VR, that's that's huge. I mean, I'm very 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 pumped for this. Very pumped. And you know, well, funny thing uh, for me is that actually, you know, when they announce both of these uh, games for um, for VR. Mm -hmm. The one that got my attention was Doom because I thought of Fallout as being a game. Yeah, it, it's first person and you can uh, you can have a lot of fun in this big world. But also, I think because of how big it is, it may be a bit um, tiresome to really play, especially if you're, if you're meaning to play the Fallout Four in its entirety mm -hmm. in VR. I don't. I, I I think you will get tired of that in in eventually because it's you can't be. VR thing on your head, right. and I, th I think your eyes will just get tired of that. So, to me, I think that Fallout Four may 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 work very well in small bursts, in short bursts, okay, in a few areas, right? And 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 they would look very cool, right? A few areas, but Doom to me is a game that kind of, in my opinion, I think, and and keep in mind, I haven't played any of those games on VR, so I, I'm just picking out of my ass, really, <laughs> but. The idea of Doom on VR, it it sounds very cool for me because it's it's an action it's like it's it's an action game and it's it's fast paced so you can just get fifteen minutes of action and shit blowing right. around you and and demons and that stuff and I I think I'm a bit more enticed into that idea okay. than actually just sitting for four hours in Fallout Four and just get my VR thing I don't know, I don't to me Fallout Four is a game that I think I'd rather play for long stretches on a TV. Mm -hmm. And Doom is a game that I can play for 30 minutes and with, in VR and kind of blast with it and then just put it down right. and do something else, yeah. I think. I mean, so. that's that's fair, right? It, it's There's so many tastes and, and right. you know expectations but, but cool. VR. Bo bo right. Both things yeah, yeah, yeah. are awesome. Are exactly. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, 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 it, it, it was a cool thing. It was a cool announcement, and I'm looking forward to that. Definitely. And um, 
they sh they close the, the showing with some Dishonored 2 gameplay. Dishonored 2, their biggest game, the biggest upcoming game, it's coming this year, right? It's coming this year, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, November, I think. I think. Yeah. So it looks very, very cool. However, man, um, I must say that I think the demo that it showed didn't... Yeah, November. Didn't uh, do much justice to the game, I think, or looked a bit too slow and bo even boring at times to me. You think? Yeah, the demo, because it, it... I think, and again, I, I'm just peeking out of my head, right? Because I haven't played the game. I haven't seen... You didn't play the first one? The... No, I, I didn't. Oh, I okay. didn't. Okay. But... Very cool game. I, you should I know, I know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have the game. I, oh, I, I do have a copy, but I, have, but I haven't played, <laughs> I haven't I haven't played. played okay. it. Yeah. But I think that what they picked to show wasn't too exciting to me. A few parts, yes, but then I kind of lost interest because it was going just too slowly. And then when when they got into combat, mm -hmm. I think the combat looked a bit clunky. Odd, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very odd, a bit clunky. And I I don't know why they showed combat in a in a game of stealth, stealth game, yeah. So the the demo they showed didn't didn't convince me at all. Okay. But it also didn't hurt my 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 overall feelings of the game. Right. Because I know that Dishonor is very cool. It's it's it's, it's a very a cool game, a very good game, and I'm looking forward to Dishonor because of the name Dishonor. Mm -hmm. But also they had they also had the chance with this demo to impress me and they didn't. Okay. So that's that was my overall. Thought. Right. Okay. Yeah. Of I mean. I do agree with the combat. I think the combat looked a little clunky. Sorry, clunky. I uh, I don't necessarily enjoyed it, but I I do think that you know where the game is strong, it's on the stealth part. Yeah. And uh, I I don't I don't really uh, have any gripes with what they showed prior to the combat part of the of the demo of the gameplay demo. Uh, I liked it, and uh, what I do think is that they are trying to push as much as they can this um, new character, um, not new, um, it's Eliza, Ellie, Ellie um, oh my god, what's the name of the, you know, the girl yeah, princess yeah. that you rescued on the first game, and that's your new playable character and whatnot. I still believe that, even though Elise. there are, uh, Elise, yeah, exactly, yeah. thank you, uh, that even though there are some very cool attacks that she has and that she's able to do, I still Still think I would prefer Corvo's, uh, the original characters, and his plethora of, of uh, you know, abilities and skills, because they were more exhilarating, you know, the whole teleporting and, and you know, uh, wisping from one place to the next and, you know, the rat control and the, the those different abilities that he had. I think they were a little more enticing, more interesting to me. So I think I would play the game as him rather as uh, as Elise, at least for the first playthrough. Of course, I would do uh, two playthroughs of that game, one with each character. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think they're pushing it a little too much. I wanted to see more Corvo in there uh, to see how he has evolved, how he has changed this far. Uh, but as you said, I mean, the demonstration they had there wasn't bad and it didn't hurt my reception and my my expectations of the game i'm still looking forward to it and november the 11th it's a good i think a good place yeah. for it to be uh so yeah i'm, I'm, I'm looking forward i'm to not it. sure if it is a big enough powerhouse to be to launch in november but i think that bethesda has the, the means and the money especially yeah sure to to push it yeah and to have a have it on gamers eyes during that very very busy um, time of year yeah very, very busy time yeah i say it's a, it's a good game to be in that spot because it's a good thing to have for the people that are not that interested in the first person shooters in the call of duties in the battlefields in the you know all this plethora of games that are gonna gears and whatnot that are gonna come out in this pre-holiday season or yeah. almost holiday season uh, it's a good alternative if you want something more stealthy, something more, uh, you know, that you have to have some rational thinking to to solve and to play. I think this is a very very good thing. Like Thief was uh, yeah. back in 2013, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, I'm excited for it. I think this other one was a, a hidden gem there in, in uh, last generation. So I'm expecting good things from this other too. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think they can definitely definitely. Um managed to pull something very 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 cool out of all of this and, yes uh, i trust bataza with with that absolutely
I, I definitely, definitely trust them with that. And that's it for Bethesda. And let's um, let's go quicker because, damn, it's <laughs> we're running out of time <laughs> almost already. So, I don't think it's going to be possible. <laughs> no, I don't think. But let's, let's try, let's try yeah. to keep it let's go. Uh, as quick as possible. Microsoft on Monday. Microsoft had a big, a big showing. They began with Xbox One S, a new slimmer version of the Xbox One. Yeah. Looks so neat, so gorgeous. If you yes. haven't got an Xbox One, I think this is a good, a good opportunity to do so. It's launching in August. And yeah. it's forty percent smaller. Yeah, it has an integrated power brick yeah. for the first time in yes. Xbox history. Directly to the finally, that's you know, just a cord from your Xbox to the wall. The f- and finally, that's it. Man, finally, yes. finally, that's that, that's that's uh, that's that's something that I love about the PS4 hardware. Just yeah, not having mm-hmm. that thing. Exactly. That's very very nice that they they managed to do that. Forty percent smaller, and it has HDR. Yeah, and a four K four K playback for Blu rays. Yes, and um. And 4K playback for Netflix also, right? That's yeah, for the, all the you know all uh, yeah. video Everything streaming media. Games. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And Although it, there are some rumors that I'm not entirely sure if that's like they are upscaling to 4K in some games, but I'm not entirely sure if that's know. accurate. I don't think so. I don't think so either. But at least, yeah, for Blu-rays and Netflix and all this streaming, that's, that yeah. it's, it's going to work. It's, so it's very cool. cool. And it's coming with a new controller that has an extended range. Oh, yeah. It's uh, Bluetooth right now. Yep. You don't need a dongle anymore for right. you know connecting to your PC, PC. Or, or anywhere. It has more range. Uh, and and there was something else. Uh, um, oh, oh, yeah. The, the, the RI. Oh, the, the controller, yeah. But, I mean, the console itself has a, an RI blaster. Yeah. So you don't have to have a Kinect for it to, you know, turn on your TV, to turn on your audio system, and all these things that it can turn on or off with yeah. a, a Xbox on thing and all that. Yeah, it, it, it looks a super a super nice, super neat console. Yeah. Coming in August for two ninety nine. A very yes. competitive price. Uh, that's right, yeah. A very, very competitive price, and that's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. taking into account that a Blu-ray player, that an Ultra HD Blu-ray player, sorry, costs the exact same thing, yeah. then it's a no-brainer. I mean, it, it makes no sense to buy a Blu-ray player. Exactly, yeah. A you can buy a Blu-ray an, player, just exactly, an Xbox One. An Xbox, and you have the Blu-rays, and you have gaming there with yeah. you know AAA games for some time. So that's it's, it's awesome. a no-brainer, guys. It's, it's a no-brainer, it's, yeah. yeah. It's, it's 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 a super super well priced competitive machine. Yeah, I, lo- I love that. I love yes. that. E- even though I'm not getting it because I already got an Xbox One myself. Right. Yeah. It's it's a super nice, super mm-hmm. super cool thing. Then they talk about an, a new initiative called Xbox Play Anywhere. So yeah. now a lot of games are gonna having are gonna be having a, like a small thing on the box, a small logo, mm-hmm. the Xbox Play Anywhere logo, and games that have that logo are gonna be playable both on the Xbox One and PC. So you buy and Windows Ten. That's an important uh, yeah. specification. Yeah, if you have Windows 7, well, 8, right, right. Or anything I mean, else, yeah. it's Windows 10 exclusive. Exclusive, yeah, yeah. right, right. Yeah, good point, good point, good point. So uh, you got one version of the game, you get the game for Xbox One, and you also get a game, the game for PC, for Windows 10. Yeah, PC, yeah. For mm-hmm. Windows 10, right? right. So that, that's, I mean, that for consumers, I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Because you get, uh, if for, for especially for consumers that play on both platforms, yeah. that have a Windows 10 PC mm. and an Xbox One, because you can play on one platform, then resume your gameplay on another one, and also play with people on different platforms. On the, uh, yes. It's cross-network they are, play. Yeah, they are pushing that cross-network thing a lot, and Xbox I think that's one and, and very Windows cool. 10, yeah, right? especially for all everything <laughs> except shooters, obviously, first-person shooters. Right. I think it's great. I think it's it's great that awesome. I can play my Forza game with mm-hmm. you know PC players and Xbox players yep. and, and this. Absolutely. And hopefully this is a good first step towards that real dream of, PS4, consoles, or Xbox, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, I'm very, I, as you mentioned, I mean, consumer-wise, it's excellent. It's great. Yeah. You have, I'm, I've always been pro-choice with everything. You know, mm-hmm. having or not the Kinect is your choice. Mm-hmm. Having or not your, everything is your choice. This is your choice if you want to play your games on PC or, or on uh, your console. Uh, for them, I don't know how well this is going to be. I mean, now people on PC don't really have, a, if they have Windows 10, they don't really have a, a, a reason maybe for buying games uh, or for buying sorry a console mm-hmm. uh but i am I'm, I'm guessing as you mentioned to me when i told you uh microsoft has its numbers and they're you know they have a team just dedicated yeah. to analyzing the market and all that so i'm guessing they saw an opportunity and potential and i mean if the games are what it's making you you know profit then it makes sense to have more games available to everyone yeah, and right. not just consoles so yeah it's it's cool let's see where this goes but it's i mean in terms of consumer wise mm-hmm. uh, you know choices this is great it's yeah. perfect and i can now play anything you know if i go on a vacation i can play it on my pc too which is absolutely a nice it's cool, option it's cool. yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a good option in the if airport you can or somewhere. have enough of your 
Halo. Yeah. Or your, <laughs> or your gear. Or your sorry. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. Speaking of gear, Gears of War 4 yeah. looks a graphical powerhouse as yes, they it does. as they said yeah. for the Xbox One. I can't believe how good that game looks. Yes. And um, just speaking of how that game looks, it looks impressive. It looks fun. I'm very unsure of the dialogue and a lot of the yeah. story stuff. <laughs> yeah. I was like, really? And I, th I think that was very, very lacking in that demo. But just uh, looking at, 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 that, at that gameplay demo, I want to play that. Yeah. I wanted to play that. When they were showing it. it, that looks so much fun in co-op. Yeah, we, we in should, co -op, Yeah, we should play that. Game. It <laughs> we, we gotta. So yes. so nice, so beautiful. It was probably that, and another game that we will be talking about later. Yeah, my highlight of the of the Microsoft, 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 Microsoft absolutely it looks yeah. so so nice. Let's just hope the character development is there, and that they yeah. you know not it's not all the game that type of dialogue and corny and cheesy things. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, it's, it, I mean, it's just a glimpse, right? It, mm -hmm. it can get better, and it hopefully it will get better. And even even if it's cheesy and bad, in that yeah, sense, it's going to be fun to play. Gameplay-wise, it looks really, really, yeah. really, really fun. So Agreed. looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Also, from Gears of War, General Ram is joining Killer Instinct. General Ram yeah, from the Gears of for War. for the original, right? Right, and uh, the final boss. So yeah, the we Spoilers recently, if you can yeah. play <laughs> a 10-year-old yeah, game. Yeah, we recently uh, beat the guy, right? Yeah. Uh, a couple months back. <laughs> so joining Killer Instinct? Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Then nice. Forza Horizon 3. Yeah, I man. haven't played a single Forza game. I've been kind of wanting to play a Forza Horizon. So a Horizon one, yeah. Mm -hmm. A Horizon game recently. Man, this one looked... Man, that's so cool. And I'm not a racing games fan, but this one, oh shit. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I, I've never played a, a, other than Gran Turismo 2 or 3. I haven't played a gaming uh, racing game in the rest of my life. But this trailer, I mean, check that trailer out the, with the, you know, wicked game cover, uh, very, you know, this in game cars going around there, then jumping on the dunes and going in the right on the on the beach and, and, and drifting and I mean it's very, very cool looking and very, very fun too. And to, it, it, to graphically be part it looks of. impressive. Yes, it looks it does. Very impressive. And they had a, a game a live gameplay demo with yeah. a guy playing on the Xbox One and two people playing on PCs. Yeah. And one girl playing on uh, an Xbox One S too. Oh, right, right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they had three people, right? Or four? Four. Four four people. What four? Yeah. Oh that was three only. Yeah. Well they they had Cross, uh, cross network, network play. Yes. So they had all these people, as was one NPCs, playing on the same match yeah. and on the same world and just having fun. Yeah. That was so cool. I, I like that. I like that. And I'm looking forward to that. And I'm very excited for Forza Horizon 3. I think I, I may even pick it up. So this looks cool. Next, a game that we, that both of us, we are very, very much looking forward to. Yeah. It's Record. We're looking forward to that because of the team that is behind this. It's Keiji Nafune from Mega Man. Yeah. And uh, the team behind Metroid Prime. A lot of yes. the guys behind Metroid Prime, which is one of our, of our favorite, favorite games, games of, of all time. time. Yeah. And funny thing, I was expecting more showcase yeah, for, this, for, for this game. They just show a small trailer with some glimpses of gameplay mm -hmm. here and there. Nothing too special. Nothing that really caught, us, caught our eyes. Yeah. I'm still excited for the game. I still want to see more of the game. But I was disappointed today that we didn't see Many, more yeah, of that. Exactly. But it looks it, it, it doesn't look bad at all. It right. looks nice. But you, you you told me that it doesn't look like something that you were expecting. Really. Yeah, I was expecting a little bit more of the influences of the Metroid team there. Uh, more exploration heavy, more puzzle solving. And, and I mean, it was just a trailer, right? And it showcase combat and i'm sure i mean combat it's part of every game mm -hmm. including metroid prime yeah but i wanted to be to to see a little more of that you know dark uh, deep exploration and, and going deeper and deeper into somewhere and, and having to solve this puzzles with it. the closer i ha i got to to see metroid in there was the spider core thingy mm -hmm. that you know grabs and clamps into a rail-like structure and that's very much reminiscent of the morph ball uh you know railing that yeah. you could you know hook up to in, in the prime series and that's the closest i've got and i really hope that the game has a little bit more exploration that they showed and that there's a lot of puzzle solving there and that the girl this is uh they she had a name i forgot it uh it's a deep character not just uh mm -hmm. You know, a regular nobody, uh, uh, John yep. uh, Jane Doe. I want her to be a, a good character, like someone to remember. Mm -hmm. But you know, other than that, I think the game's looking good. And for the price tag, it's it's, it's forty bucks. It's forty bucks, yeah. It's it's it seems like a very very good game. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm still looking forward to that. I'm a bit worried because uh, because of the fact that they didn't show much of the game. Yeah. But I'm still excited about it, and yeah, looking forward to that. Then Final Fantasy 15, they showed a terrible demo of yeah. the game. Yeah, <laughs> crazy, yeah. Just a god-awful demo of the game. And Final Fantasy 15 has looked like a very impressive game. It looks yeah. nice. It looks huge. It does look like the biggest Final Fantasy ever. Yeah. But the demo they showed looks so unpolished. Yeah, very so clunky. clunky mm-hmm. So bad. Because it was dude. This dude was trying to I don't know roll <laughs> yeah. into an arm of a boss and <laughs> and it didn't. It wasn't working out. It looked bad. Man. It yeah. looked awful. Man. <laughs> oh, that looked. Wow. Yes. Terrible. I don't. Yes. I don't know what to think about it. I'm not a Final Fantasy follower. But I just hope the game... It's better than what they showed. It isn't like that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, then on more positive things, Xbox One is getting some updates this summer. That's right. Some new features, including background music. Yeah. Which I didn't know was absent. Yeah, me either. <laughs> I got it to be completely honest. That, I didn't know That either. was on the Xbox 360. Yeah. That is on the PS4. I didn't know it was out of the Xbox One. Yeah, I hadn't noticed. Uh, wow. Yeah. I, very weird. Wow. I, I've tried the music player... And you know all the, the it works, but I never try to use it whilst playing. While playing, because I uh, like I like to do that during some online you know, multiplayer right. games. Yeah, because for instance, I, I I like to listen to some music while playing Overwatch. Yeah, you told me that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, and I I used to do that on uh, the 360 with Call of Duty mm-hmm. and even Battlefield. Just listen to some music. Right, and I it 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 baffles me that there was it was absent, but good thing it's coming back. Also, something that we've been asking for yes. <laughs> many, many times, yeah. language region independence. Yes. You guys in the States, I know you don't care about it. It's, it's, it, it's not a big deal for you. But for us, yes. this is a big deal because yeah. we live in Mexico. Our main language is Spanish, right? But we play games in English because we yeah. like to play games in English. Yeah. We don't like games translated into Spanish. We... We're, we do speak English, we understand English, and we've been playing games in English during our whole lives. We're yes. used to it. We're mm-hmm. used to that. And we like games in English. So our con- And we like our consoles in English because right. yeah. that's how we like gaming. But we can't put our consoles in English if we select our, our country as Mexico. As Mexico. Yeah. If we put our, if, if, on our Xbox One, if we just select Mexico as our, re- or as our region, we, can only, we only have the option of Spanish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So both of us, we had... Our Xbox Ones with, set to United States yeah, uh-huh. with English as language. the language. Yeah, mm-hmm. but that in turn, I, I I know that at least for you, that caused that the TV commands didn't work as well because you, you couldn't. I, I think it was that it was the case because you couldn't set up properly your uh, your cable. TV with right, Xbox yes. One yeah. because it wasn't recognized. Yeah, because as my a provider, provider, yeah, as a provider it's not in on, the United the, on the United States. Yeah, exactly. That's so right. So now, and, mm-hmm. I, and, I, and I do know that this is an issue for many people, especially in Europe. Exactly. Because right? yeah. uh, Europe is a continent with a lot of freaking languages yeah. and people yes. moving forward. And I think this is a very smart and even common sense thing for Microsoft to do in this globalized world right course, now where yeah. people. People move countries all the time. People just move to another country because like job and whatever. Yeah. And this is, I, I don't know, if I move to, I don't know, Greece yeah. for a job and I, st- and I just moved in a month to Greece, I'm not putting my console in, in Greek, Greek. Right. <laughs> I don't know a single word of Greek. Exactly. Right. I want to put my console in English. Yeah. And I wouldn't have the option to do that. Exactly. Because I'm in Greece. So, so I, I think this is a common set thing to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that they, they did this. And that's my props to Microsoft for this, finally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cortana is coming to the Xbox One. Yeah, very super, interesting. Super, 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 yeah. super cool. Also, clubs, which is similar to the communities on the PS4. Yeah. You can have groups of people with common interests. Mm-hmm. Also, a thing called Looking for Group, where you can set sort of like a beacon or stuff. To have people join your yeah, group exactly. If you're something. doing a raid on Destiny and you're looking for yeah, players, right. you can set that beacon up, and then you know people will come to you absolutely in a way. And a thing for esports or competitive gaming yeah. called arena. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff. A lot yeah. of, of nice, nice things. Just to add up to that Cortana thing that you mentioned, uh, another big addition that they made or change that they made is that you know previously prior to this announcement. You could only use uh, voice commands and, and Cortana, of course, with Kinect. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, 
you can use your Kinect or a headset. If you have a, a headset, even the the one that comes with the console, uh, or your own if you had one any standard, lying there. Any standard, any standard, exactly. Yeah, yeah, three millimeter uh, headset. You can use it for voice commands too. So awesome. you 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 now have uh, cool. sorry have access to that. Uh, you know, part of the system yeah. that's a very cool one that I've used and loved ever since the console came out, voice commands, uh, for, you know, without the need of a Kinect. So yeah. that's very nice, very that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. that. That's super, super cool. Yeah, that's yeah. a very nice feature that I'm definitely going to be using. Right, yeah, because now you can. Now, yeah. yeah, just using your headset. Yeah, right, right. Minecraft, I don't care about Minecraft, mm -hmm. but something cool, cross-platform playing between iOS, Android, and Windows 10. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They show inside the game from the developers of Limbo. Of Limbo, yeah. It looks nice. And Limbo. are giving Limbo for free? Exactly. Limbo mm -hmm. is coming for f it's coming it's free now for all players on Xbox. Yeah, One. I, I like that. I, that. That was nice. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. very, and inside's nice. looking interesting looks, too. Looking nice. Looking yeah. cool. Yeah. I trust the team. Uh, that, that team definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely looking forward to that. Something very very cool that I am still hype about Xbox design. Oh, right. Yeah. So. You you know me and, and you know that I'm I'm a, a big a sucker for special editions and special controllers and that kind of stuff. Yeah. I like collecting that kind of stuff. Not not a, I'm not a collector because that's I don't have the resources for that. <laughs> but I like this. I like to have a, a different controller than anyone yes, else, a different right. console. Mm -hmm. I like I like this kind of stuff and this new special edition controller that it looks nice. I'm getting it. Mm -hmm. I like that kind of stuff. And now they had um they have now a, a thing called Xbox Design Lab. Yeah. You can go online Xbox Design Lab and you can design your controller. You can put, you can choose a color from the top, the back, the sticks, the bumpers, the triggers, the D pad, the, the, D -pad, yeah. the buttons, the, the face buttons. That's so cool. Yes, I like that. And I I, I played with that tool for a bit mm -hmm. last week, and wow, yeah, it, yeah. it's simple. Very, very simple, but you can come up with cool-looking controllers very, very quickly. Very unique and very individual, right? Yeah. You can even have your uh, name. And, and yeah, you, in, you, can, you, can, you can put a word right. name on, on the controller. Which is cool. That's, that's awesome. Yes. That, yeah, that's super, super, super nice. And it's 80 bucks. Yeah, which is so not much different. From 10 a... bucks more than a standard controller. That's, yeah. that's nice. Yes. 80 bucks plus shipping, I think. I, I would assume. So that that's nice. That's nice. So mm -hmm. if I ever, if, if when, when the time comes for me to buy a new controller, I... I think I'm gonna do this. Yeah, and we, uh, you mentioned that it was the new one, the right? New the one. the gripped one with the, the one. blue uh, Bluetooth. Bluetooth thing. Uh, yeah, perfect. It's a new one. That's amazing. Yeah, my only gripe with that is this, it still doesn't have a rechargeable battery. It still uses right. the AA, but it's 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 a small thing and it looks nice and I can't wait to take some time and design a Make super nice controller and cool. just have it shipped to me. That, that that looks so 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 nice. Nice. Idea at Xbox, which is the uh, indie program for Xbox, yeah. which by the way they ha they are they're super awesome. They have some great great attention for indie developers. And they they oh, showed we've used it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we we, we we we've been uh, talking with those guys yeah. and for our projects and stuff. Very nice. They they're very 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 nice people mm -hmm. and they had a, a reel of games including Cuphead, Outlast 2 and among Others. I saw yeah. ukulele in that reel. Yeah, it was very excited. <laughs> very, very, very excited. It's, yeah. it's a lot of a lot of games. But my highlight out of all of that, and they did focus on that yes. title after the reel. We happy few. Oh yes. my god, yes. that game looks so nice. So Bioshock in the good yes. sense of <laughs> exactly. being like Bioshock. Yeah. So creepy in a sense. So mind. Thrilling. It's yeah, it's, so... it's a dystopic, uh, you know, almost steampunky uh, alternative reality, and it, it it's very thrilling, if very you psychological. If you haven't watched that, go online. Yes. We have a few gameplay Absolutely. at Microsoft Conference E3 2016. Just watch that. It's so yeah. nice, so cool, so sick in a way. Yeah. So <laughs> disturbing. It, yes. it, it disturbed me. I felt uneasy, uneasy yes. while watching that, and that's... Awesome. That's and an awesome. For thing. what I've gathered, gathered, it's one of the highlights of the entire uh, E3. Like, there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of people talking about it, and that's nice and it's, and to it's see. An indie. And it's that's an super, indie, super exactly. Cool. Super yeah. Cool. yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Agreed. That's super, super nice. Looking forward to that. Yeah, absolutely. I think if you are on the Xbox preview program, like, if, uh, what's the name of that? Uh, like they had with Daisy on PC. 
uh, that you can try a game that's still in development. Early access. Uh, yeah, early access. That's it. Uh, you can do that for this game. You can go and, and buy the early access version and you can play a certain amount of the game and mm -hmm. you know try out the different things while it's in development. Okay. So if you can't wait, you can go and try it out. I mean, oh, the game is obviously right. not complete and, and if you want to experience the, the wholeness of the game, then you better wait. But if you can you know live with the work in progress, then you can go and try it out and that's very yeah. nice. Absolutely. Yeah. Then uh, our predictions came yeah. through. Gwen, <laughs> yes, is indeed happening. Yeah, just as you a said, standalone Gwen game. So, yeah. if again, if you don't know what Gwen is, Gwen is a card game inside the Witcher Tree. It's, it's 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 a game that you play with NPCs in the in the world of the Witcher, of the Witcher. Tree while hunt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now that card game is coming as a standalone title, yeah. and. I thought it was gonna be for mobiles, but no, it's gonna be for consoles. Yeah, as and well. PC, I think. And PC, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just as you predicted, a yeah. went game, which is great. I mean, it's it lends itself to be a, a unique and, and, and they, game and, that's and on its own, standalone. They're expanding upon that. They're yeah. expanding upon that. They want for me. I'm, I'm, just, I'm <laughs> sold this. I'm, I'm just a big, big went fan. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. Go a City lot. Project Red. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nice. Guys, you're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of not so awesome for me, at least, Tekken 7, I, I don't really care right. about that at all. Tekken 7 is coming. That's cool. Yeah. That's nice. Dead Rising 4 also coming. Not a fan of, not, not a big fan of that. It's, I was a fan of the presentation, not a much a fan of, yeah. of the game. I think the snowy, you know, falling thing, yeah. up thing, that was cool. But yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a nice thing to know that it's coming. Then Scalebound, a game that we're looking forward to, had, yes. in my opinion, a terrible demo on stage. Yeah, very, we did, very we bad. we are in disagreement, right? In that one, I yeah. I, 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 th I thought that the, the you know what they showed was cool. I think it showed a nice glimpse of the multiplayer aspect of the game. Um, you thought it was a little more. I thought it looked unfinished, unpolished, unpolished yeah. and mm -hmm. a very very clunky. It looked like uh, it tried to be Dark Souls, but it didn't manage at all to be that. It, it tried to be like a faster, fast paced Dark Souls, but it looks so. In my opinion, it looks so bad. Okay. I'm still looking forward for the game. I just think that they picked the wrong thing to show. Okay. But I'm, I'm, I still think the game has potential. In that. Right. So, yeah, I'm still looking forward to that. And um, Sea of Thieves from Prayer. Yeah, that's that's my second highlight of the, of the conference. It looked nice, definitely. Yes. I'm still unsure of many aspects of it, but it, it, um, it has a potential on yeah. that. I want, I want to see more of it. Yeah. I don't see the rare thing in Sea of Thieves. I don't okay. see anything that makes it a rare yeah. game mm -hmm. at all. I agree. But it the potential for that game is there. Just let's just wait and see more of that. Yeah. Soon. State of Decay 2. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I know the first one was a very big game on the you know live arcade thing back in the day. Uh, it was one of those big zombie games. It was an MMO. Mm -hmm. it, was, it had some very interesting uh, features and yeah. and uh, you know thanks to the game that made it special. Yeah. Uh, State of Decay 2 was. A uh, bit different. It's more of a AAA thing now, but it's also no longer an MMO. It's a four-player co-op thing. And I told you, right, that when I saw it, first time I saw the, the beginning of the trailer, I thought, oh, my God, this is Left 4 Dead 3. <laughs> and it wasn't. But, uh, but yeah, it got me excited. And I think it's a similar dynamic, right? Four players, yeah. zombies in this co-op world trying to, to, you know, do, I hope, a co-op campaign. Yeah. And if that's the case, then I'm excited. I, I I'm really aching for a left for uh, sorry a left for dead uh, esque game. Absolutely. If not a left for dead three sometime soon. Uh, so yeah, I mean, other than that, it, there's not much to say. There was not much. Uh, there was no gameplay for the game, so it's hard to judge it. But interesting, I think it's an interesting choice for a sequel. Definitely, mm -hmm. definitely, definitely. Halo Wars two. Yeah. The, one of the biggest titles for Microsoft this year because of yeah. the brand. Halo, they showed the CGI trailer. Um, I didn't really enjoy the trailer much because I'm not into those kinds of, ch of trailers at all, really. Mm -hmm. But uh, to, uh, I think I told you, give, given, gi giving them some credit, it's super tough yeah. to show a an um, in-game trailer of, 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 of an, an RTS, RTS game. Yeah. So, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I was expecting more of Halo Wars 2 or more of more info, I don't know. But it's it's nice to have. Yeah, me either. I'm not an RTS guy, so I, I'm, I'm yeah. going to pass on Halo Wars. But yeah, I know there's a big following for the game. So. And they closed the conference with... Uh, and I, I don't want to spend much time on this because we have still a lot of to talk yeah. about and we ru uh, we're, we ran out of time already. <laughs> and we're still missing Ubisoft, Sony, and Nintendo. But yeah. we're just going to get qu uh, go quick on them. But uh, I want to spend at least two or three minutes on this. Um, Scorpio. Yeah. Project Scorpio. 
Oh, God. Yeah, it's uh, same problem with Neo, same problem with this weird uh, fixation on trying to deliver a mid-generation upgrade to the consoles. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. I don't understand that. Again, they're half-assed consoles. They really shouldn't be the case. They, 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 if you want to make a better console, then make a better console and a new generation. Don't yeah. just do this uh, mid thing and now, you know, it, it's just a mess. I, I don't understand it. Uh, I, in in terms of the, what they showed, I wasn't really, you know, it didn't bother me. I mean, the video was okay. Uh, the specs for the thing, it's, it's you know, one of the guys at the end mentioned it and I have to agree, it's, it's a monstrous console. Uh, we don't know what it looks like. We don't know what it's going to play. But we know that has some very heavy capable. specs in there. It's yeah. very capable. Um, but still, I mean, if the purpose of this is to have a 4K capable console with VR, then okay. I don't think it's enough of an excuse to have a new console just for that. And for me. I still believe that it's going to divide some of your user base because you're giving them now several consoles that and besides it's stupid to announce a, a slimmer version of your console and then a new entire version of the yeah. same console uh, at the end of the show uh, but i do understand that you know in a way sony forced their hand and they had to come out with something to to you know seem competitive mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the only thing that i you know that i don't dislike i mean i don't like scorpio and the idea and the concept but the only thing that i don't dislike about it it's that it's coming four years after the original Xbox Launch. One came out. So it's not that much of a, you know, if you're saying that the life cycle ends with this coming out, then it was a good enough life cycle, right? Four years is the same amount of time that the original Xbox had. Xbox had. Uh, I know it's not the end of the generation, and I know this is just like the high-end version of, of the Xbox. But... Mm -hmm. Okay, it yeah. was just it was four years after the console came out. So if someone wants to upgrade, it's not that hard on the pocket. Uh, only granted that this has to be there has to be enough time between this and the next Xbox for it to be not a, a you know a stab in the back for the consumers. Uh, that's about it. I I don't know really what else to say about it. I upgrade I upgrade to a more at a newer more powerful console. To a newer generation, yeah. not, not for graphics, not for graphics, but for better games, yeah. bigger worlds, better AI, stuff that, that that can be possible on next gen, like more destructible environments, that kind of stuff, not for more pixels, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, just a new console, just for more pixels on screen, mm, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not sure of that. That and you, you mentioned, right, and t it's Xbox One S and uh, Prey Scorpio on the same conference, that's just confusing and that to, to me doesn't make sense yeah. at all but i don't know i'm not an expert on that kind of stuff and uh the last thing i want to i want to talk about this to me for me in my opinion the way they talked about the scorpio and the, and the video to me it wasn't terrible mm -hmm. that was for me that was a sales pitch that was a sales pitch based on performance and that alone to me is super bad it's it's, it's awful but it was also a terrible, a super awful sales pitch for me. It was one of the worst pitches I've ever heard. And uh, I just thought it was cringe worth even that video. I, I, I absolutely disliked it. For me, if you're going to show a powerful console, and it's and if it's indeed a beast of a machine as it seems to be, just show me what it's capable of, right? Don't have these dudes talking about the highest quality pixels. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. That was awful to me. And I didn't like the way they showed and uh, I just hope that Microsoft gets um, their messaging together. Yeah, and yeah, because there's a lot message, of different right. messages coming around and, and Absolutely. in and back. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with that in mind, let's jump to Ubisoft because yeah. the time is, is, yeah, is, is, it's is short. Just, absolutely. They open with just dance, mm. nah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But the thing, the funny thing here is that just dance, they did mention it's coming to the NX. Oh, so it's, <laughs> it's the first confirmation of a game <laughs> of the NX that the NX exists right. outside of Nintendo yeah, and of Dragon right. Quest. And I was like, what? Huh. Like, what? That was Interesting. Funny. Funny, yeah. funny thing. Funny I thought of that. Yeah. Ghost Recon Wildlands. Yeah. My highlight of you of that and, that and for not for honor we'll talk about later. Yes, Ghost Recon Wildlands looks like a mixture between the division and Splinter Cell. Yes, and doesn't look 
any original at all but the blend of these two things sounds so enticing yeah. to me sounds so so good they show a demo looks nice looks fun again nothing new in my opinion mm. nothing to nothing mind-blowing or just game nothing industry breaking right right but it looks nice it looks yeah. a lot of fun i'm looking forward to that absolutely it should, it should be a lot of fun agreed south path south path <laughs> south, <laughs> south park yes the fracture but <laughs> the fracture butthole nice that title that's, a, <laughs> yeah. that's one of the most clever titles <laughs> absolutely. i've ever seen absolutely i'm um, not a big fan of south park myself yeah but uh this i think i'm pretty sure this, gonna, this is gonna be a nice a very 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 strong game at least a, a very, very fun one yeah. a very a very nice game and a very a favorite for many many followers of the of the franchise absolutely. especially given that the last south park game was so so good yeah it was so 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 nice so that's uh that's that, that's cool. That's um that was a nice nice thing to have. A bit too long of a showing in my opinion. Agreed. But it is it's, it's a good thing to have. The division DLC, okay? It's cool for people that are playing the division, yeah. which I know that there are a lot of those. Mm -hmm. Eagle Flight VR. That was an odd an odd uh, game to show, but I think it was a cool one too. I think Yeah. They are nice pushing experiments. VR. Yeah, it's a yeah. nice experiment exactly. They are pushing VR a little stronger than yeah. the the competitors. At least EA didn't show anything about VR uh, that I know, to my knowledge. No. Either has the Square Enix or any of the other big studios, you know, showed something. Well, no, Square Enix did, yeah. uh, but you know, not at this level that they have several games that are on VR. Yeah. Uh, and Eagle Flight seems like a very interesting. I mean, it's a weird concept, mm -hmm, but definitely. it's a fun game to play. At least a very, uh, you know, that kind of fun that it's dumb too, mm -hmm. like a very dumb, stupid yeah. fun. So yeah, I mean, it's cool. I wouldn't buy it, but no. it's I, if someone that I knew had it, and you know, we had it several VR headsets for some reason. Uh, I would play it gladly. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Also for VR, Star Trek is coming. I didn't like the. I didn't like what they showed. I mean, me either. Didn't look enticing to me at all. But also, I'm not a Star Trek fan, so right. maybe hardcore fans of Star Trek. Maybe they did went a bit crazy over that. I'm not myself. Mm -hmm. Meh. For honor, yeah. man. You know what what it's selling me into that game? What? That dude that is showing the game. Oh, right. That, uh, the I one with it, the cane? If I think it was the creative director of the game. I think. Yeah, the one, the dude with long grayish hair. Yeah, big beard. With, with a big beard. And the, the cane. cane yeah. And the voice. Yeah. That <laughs> guy is so goddamn authentic. Yes. Yeah, That dude is so authentic. Just put, just that dude on stage that he alone sells me yeah. into the game. I agree. How he looks at the audience, at the camera, how he walks with a cane, and the voice, the laughs he makes. <laughs> yeah. That dude isn't show, isn't talking about the game. He is acting yeah. mm -hmm. the game. Yeah, Man, I that's... agree. I agree. He, he's living he, the game. He's yeah. living the game. I, I can smell the passion yeah. <laughs> for yeah. his game out of him. Like I can see his passion on his eyes. That's I agree. Awesome. Yes. And then, and if, if he's really directed this game <laughs> I'm yeah, so if, pumped. If, if that's that's a great indication of a game being, you know, if if your director, your creative director is it's that passionate about your game, then you're on the right track. Absolutely. And yeah, that's I agree. He was great on stage. I'm almost certain that on the trailer he's one of the voices, if if not the narrator, the narrator, he was one of the of the, you know, fighter. I hope so. Guys. <laughs> yeah, cuz he has an amazing awesome voice. voice. Yeah, 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 I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, 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 because of him and because of what we've been showed of the game, I'm very pumped for for Four Honor. What they show looks good, yeah. looks fun. Uh, nothing that boasts that that really impresses me much. Graphically, it looks awesome, mm -hmm. but it, gameplay wise, I don't know. I gotta play it to, yes, to be able to judge course. it. Yeah, but man, that dude, that dude with the cane. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry if you're watching this, man. You're awesome. <laughs> you, you you do an amazing job. Oh, and uh, worth mentioning that it has a single player campaign. Yeah, that's and very multiplayer. interesting. And multiplayer, yeah, of course. The so complete package. Yeah, yeah, exactly, a whole game. Absolutely, looking forward to that. That, for, as I said, Dead and Ghost Recon Wildlands are my Highlights. big things for Ubisoft. Then Grow Up, which is a, a, a follow up to Grow Home. Yes, which was an indie title, one of the most uh, acclaimed indie titles from last year. Right? Yeah, Same with the Red Rover, right? Yeah, it's a low Ubisoft. poly game, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's coming. Uh, it's getting a sequel, and it looks it's looking good. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Also, uh, Ubisoft is uh, mixing 
uh, the trial series with uh, Blood Dragon yeah. from Far Cry 3. Yeah. And it's called Trials of the Blood Dragon. Mm-hmm. I like, I'm not my kind of game really, but I like that they're experimenting yeah. with, their, with their franchise and their ideas and mixing them up together. That's super, super cool. I then agree. Assassin's Creed movie, to me, I, I'm looking forward to the movie. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I'm looking forward to watching it. Not hype body, but looking forward to that. Right. But I th- honestly think that this pl- this wasn't the place to show f- stuff of the movie. Okay. Because mm-hmm. I'm when I watch it, I want games, not movies, and I I didn't like them showing that stuff. But whatever. Yeah. I also didn't suffer through this, so right. I mm-hmm. missed that. Then uh, a game that I know that you yeah are, I'm not too convinced about. Uh, and and I think that's putting in my way. Yeah. Right. <laughs> watch Dogs too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I. You don't like the tone, right? Yeah, I like the first game. The, it was a it was decent. underwhelming, but it was decent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, what I like about that game, other than the gameplay and all that stuff, was that you know you were this regular guy that happened to be a hacker, and that yeah. you have this underground community where you have this allies and whatnot, and they were still on the, you know, they were a little underground dish in the terms of how they act and how they look. Uh, but they were still normal people and they were still, you know, relatable. Mm-hmm. Uh, these new characters, the new protagonists, the new allies, yeah. they just seem like this, like, jarred out pieces of, of uh, like, yeah. cliched versions of themselves. Like, mm-hmm. I, I I don't like the tone. I don't like that this is a new hoodie uh, uh, protagonist and, like, he puts on his headset, that, his music. That when thing, he's, I like, was like... Come on, dude. Bro, that, yeah, you're infiltrating in a, a, yes. like a mansion, whatever, like a, a, an apartment, a loft, and you put some headphones. To yeah, some music. that was the most stupid thing. Completely yeah. agree. Yeah. And this ally of his, it's just so annoying, and it's just this cutout version of a punk. Uh, you know, very yeah. Yeah. dark. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's a very cliched version of, of what stereotypes of this underground people yeah, are. I agree. And mm-hmm. I don't like that tone at all. Not at all. And I don't like... I like even less that they're making a movie about Watch Dogs. Like, why? The, why, the, why you do that? The movie, I can I can see why it could be good. I, I do see positions in the movie. I'm like you. I'm not negative on the movie, but the game, yeah, I'm right there with you. Yeah. Definitely. The movie... Eh, it could be it can be done right I think. as long as they don't do it based on this one yeah. it has a little bit more do, potential do it based on the first one maybe yes or a new thing yeah in the I universe agree. Watch yes it. so there's potential in that I think I think Watch, Watch Dogs has a lot of potential in the movie to impress visually and have some fun stuff with the hacking stuff and yeah. they, they, they can they can play with that idea and right. at least impress you visually right with the effects and the amount of stuff right. that they can be yeah. doing, but yeah, the game, this one, mm, I see potential in the game, but yeah, the the, the sto- story wise, mm, yeah, agreed. I don't know, I don't know, I, agree. I don't know, and this is Ubisoft's big title for the holidays, I think. It is, it is. So, yeah. Well, let's see that, and then they close with a very interesting game. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is, n- be I'm being honest, not my kind of thing, mm-hmm. but. Looks nice. Looks interesting. Looks fun. Looks something. And major props to the teams at Ubisoft for taking a big risk. Yeah. And doing stuff like this. Called Steep. Yes. It's sort of um open world sports game. Yeah. Based on snowboarding. Sport. Yeah, exactly. Streams, no sports. Yeah. Very odd. And I gotta say, odd. to be honest, I was half asleep during the yeah. first half of the presentation, and then at some point they made this. I think it was a paragliding thing, yeah. Uh, and one like a competition, like a race, and one of the competitors hit a rock and died, and you can just hear this scream like ah, like freaking <laughs> someone dying, and like that brought me back. Like it was. It was so ridiculous, but so, like, because the game is supposed to be grounded. It's yeah. supposed to be very, uh, you know, as if it's mm-hmm. on reality. So the fact of seeing him hit the rock and just the screaming on the back, <laughs> was like, okay, <laughs> that's a, a nice addition to it. And there were several things, like several accidents that happened during the demonstration that were kind of fun. I don't know if they were intended to be fun, but they were 
so fun to see. Yeah, I think Steep, this is the kind of game that must be demoed to the public. Yeah. Not, not in a video, but I think I think Ubisoft kind of needs to put a playable demo up on the PSN and Xbox Live stores. I yeah. Think. Playing that, I think that would be a very different experience, and mm-hmm. I think that's a way to show this game I agree. to the public. Yeah, and I agree. Maybe playing that, maybe maybe if we play that, we could have some of those moments. Yeah, exactly. And that's how we can get into that. I mm-hmm. think so I agree. Yeah, there's yeah. potential in that. Yeah, a lot. it's been a very long time since we had a good snowboarding or snow-related yeah. game. Ever yeah. since I think the PS One or PS Two days, probably. Uh, so yeah, it's a it's a good thing to see come back and yeah, a nice experiment. Absolutely. Um, props on on Ubisoft for that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So now um, let's let's go quickly to Sony. Sony, yeah. Sony, oh Sony, Sony, Sony. <laughs> oh, but, but by the way, Ubisoft. Just one last thing of Ubisoft. Yeah. I think their conference lasted way too long. That was two oh, hours. Oh, I agree. Two I hours agree. and yeah. just dragged so way too long. I think they could put that in an hour and that would be a way better showing, a yeah. way better, mm-hmm. stronger thing. Still uh, worth mentioning to Ubisoft, uh, Aisha Tyler, I still like her a lot as, a, as a host. No, she's it was an very Aisha natural, Tyler's very host. Yes, yeah. exactly. I think she's a great an host. Excellent host. Yeah, absolutely. Agreed. I hope they keep you know, bring her back. Well, for, five for years conference. in a row now. Yeah, yeah. I, an think, achievement. I think they will. I yeah. think they will. Yeah. And now, Sony. Yes. Sony, uh, Sony through the. Just, they. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I. Wow. Yeah. Such, I agreed. What a conference, man! An amazing conference. What a conference! Uh, just game after game after game. I felt I felt as if I was in a movie theater, just watching the, the trailers, trailers before yeah. the movie, just one after another after another. But of new things, of some unknown things. Yes. And games. Yeah. That a new trailer. Games Tra- and surprises that I seen before. And exactly. Yeah. So. They 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 had this orchestra playing. Yeah. And that's always so. That's always a powerful thing to do, right? And the, it was building up to something. Yeah. And then the demo started. And it was God of War. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, yes. I'm not a fan of God of War. I haven't even played the game. <laughs> but three, yeah. seeing that, I was like, yes, yes. I want that. I want to play Me that. Me too. I agree. That was, that was so, so nice. Then then uh, Sean Layden came on stage and just get just a few a few quick words. And that's gone with the show. Yep. Days gone. Which new is, IP, new IP. That's yeah, always interesting. Interesting. I told then, you, I thought this was when I first saw it. I thought the Last of yeah, Us me too. Yeah, I, me too. That was like wow. But no, no it's, it was it's a different new, thing. New IP from Sony Band. Yeah. Then the Last Guardian, which a lot of people are looking forward to, yeah. and with the, the orchestra still playing, that yeah. was so powerful. Then Horizon Zero Dawn gameplay demo looks so impressive, so good, so nice. It's just give it already. Horizon Zero Dawn. It's it's. Game of the show for One of the people. most impressive games I've Absolutely. seen in a very long while. Absolutely. Then uh, we saw a trailer for Detroit Become Human. Yeah. The game from Quantic uh, Dream. Dream. Yeah. Uh, the game from uh, David Cage, I think is the dude's name. The developers behind um, Heavy behind Rain, Heavy Rain and, and Beyond Two Souls. Souls yeah. Looks very nice. Some showcase the ability nice. for decisions. Yeah. Decisions making. I really have something for those types yeah, of game too. like very heavy on decision making and different outcomes and yeah, yeah this is exactly that I'm Absolutely. very interested about uh, on this so up to this point it was game for game after yeah. game after yeah, game yeah, 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 yeah. and then they showed a trailer for a horror game yeah. a survival horror game and it was like first person so it was Outlast 2 or maybe a or maybe, new indie title yeah very well, much what in the line of PT right? exactly what is this what is this oh it's creepy it's creepy then it it starts to some music and a few cuts camera cuts some yeah. tra- some glimpses of a lot of stuff with music b- uh, very much to a Silent Hill kind of vibe yeah very much yeah and I was okay and then it jumped back to an image of a house and then B-I-I and I was yeah. okay B-I what is that and then the letters for Resident Evil pop up <laughs> yeah. top of that <laughs> that's a very and clever I, thing of revealing it I, it being honest, <laughs> I kind of scream a bit. I was like, "What? Yeah, what? Yes." And I jump. I I I was just laying back on my chair, and I was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" Yeah, I agree. I uh, really totally went up there with you. That's a huge turnaround for Resident Evil. That's a huge wow. absolutely wow. Much, much deserved. Much, it, it's time coming for something like this to be exactly. Resident Evil again. Even, even, even if you're, it, it, maybe you're a fan of Resident Evil, and maybe you don't agree with this new direction, or it's just too big of a, of a, of a 
thrown around for the franchise. You gotta be, um, I mean, being honest, they caught everyone's attention with that. Yeah. And that's a good thing. For yeah, me. absolutely. That's, I'd rather have that than Resident Evil 6 again. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, super, super yeah, cool. if you're a fan of the series, then you have to be a fan of the very first Resident Evils, which yeah. were much more in the line of horror, horror, in the line of terror, in the line of, right. of you know, these thrillers. Uh, five and six uh, are more, much yeah. more action games than they are mm -hmm. zombie and, and horror six, games. Six I, play, uh, six, I only played the demo, and it bored me. Yeah. The demo, and that was that's yeah. a bad sign, definitely. Yeah. And this one looks cool. And then they had a, a message that said, the, play the teaser, play the demo now on PSN. Oh, right, yeah. Now, tonight. Did you play it or? Yes, I did play it. Nice. And I, I, I'd like to talk about that on the next episode of the okay. show because uh, we don't have time, right, time at all. Yeah, yeah. But I did play it. And let me tell you, it's freaking creepy. That's great. And that's awesome. That's that's super, super, super nice. I'm, I'm excited. PSVR coming October 13, 2016 for 399. Yeah. So now we have the exact date. Date. Okay. And they 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 went for some VR stuff. They had a first person shooter exploration. It's, it's sort of a shooter called Farpoint. Farpoint, yeah. Which in my opinion looks very very nice. Yeah. I like how it looked. Then they have an X Wing VR mission for Battlefront. Hmm. Batman Arkham VR. Which is from interesting. Rocksteady. Yeah. And we didn't see anything, just a uh, mask. Yeah. Wearing, yeah. The, the only thing that's you know worth mentioning of that trailer was that it was uh, Mark Hamill voice yeah. as the Joker, as the Joker, mm -hmm. which was you know narrating and yeah. saying things about the trailer. Uh, that really got me pumped up. Rocksteady man. Rocksteady. And Rocksteady, of course, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. Then a uh, Final Fantasy 15 VR experience, which in my opinion looked terrible, looked absolutely horrendous. Yeah, absolutely. It looked absolutely awful. It, it shouldn't. Awful. I, I don't think why is that. VR, but mm -hmm. eh, whatever. Yeah. The other, the other things, the Farpoint, especially for me, looked very, very nice. Yeah. And 50 games being are gonna be launching on place on PSVR from October 13 yeah. to the end of the year. 50 games, I think, it's a good it's number. It's a good number, yeah. It's a good number. Absolutely. Oh, and also forgot to mention, Resident Evil 7 is gonna be playable on in v its entirety yeah, on in VR, VR when yeah. it launches on January next year. That's very, very interesting. I'm out. I, I don't want to try. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't have the guts to do that. No, nope, I mean, nope. It's very cool to have, though. Yeah, it's... but not to play, just have it. <laughs> I'm not playing it. So then they showed the. I think it was a highlight for many people because uh, they skipped, showed though. You skipped the one important one there. Which one? Uh, the franchise revival, of the the one franchise coming back. Oh, that's later. That's after that. That was afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So they they talk. They they showed a gameplay trailer, a gameplay demo. Yes. That impressed a lot of us. Yeah. From a franchise that nobody expected anything to yeah. do. <laughs> Call of Duty Infinite Warfare had the most impressive gameplay demo on stage I've ever seen. It looked so, so fun, yeah. so nice, so new, so impressive. Different. Yeah. So different. And uh, I was watching it and I, I was like, what is this? What is yeah, it? Yeah, me too. It looks so nice, so cool, but the speech is... is yeah, wow. that point. The, 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 when he comes on this bridge and everyone, hey, hi, come, Captain, whatever. And then he goes to his ship, and you start, you know, accelerating forward yeah. into space. I thought it was like, I was like oh, wow, what is this? Is game. this Star Citizen? Is this, yeah. what's, What game is this? And I'm, at some point, I think we both have the same point, right? When they are going off the ship into, like, they, it goes they, into they, first person. Yeah, when they start shooting, yes. I was like, oh, shit. This is Call this of Call of Duty? Duty? Yeah. Because <laughs> Call of Duty yes. shooting is it's so... So distinct, exactly. Yeah. And I was, oh man, this is Call of Duty. But <laughs> when, the, when you're on the ship and when you're on the ship shooting, at the, right? And, yeah, and on, on, and on the track of an art ship and just shooting between all of these mess, I was like, whoa, yeah, whoa, this looks so cool. And then, and then when they when he gets out of the ship and begins shooting, oh, oh, it's just Call of Duty, but it looks so good, yeah, just using this grapple and just walking on, on the bree on the middle of space and just shooting dudes. Wow! Yes, that looks so nice, so cool, and I'm looking forward to I'm, that. I'm on board. Yeah, I'm on board with that. Let's just wait and see if that's gonna be the whole campaign, or that's just five minutes of the game. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And I hope that the dog fight, it's not a scripted event. Like yeah. I want that to be a to playable. Be a playable thing yeah, like you can, you can be... actually fly your ship yeah. around and, and shoot and yeah. pick targets L and all let's that. Let's wait for reviews and stuff for the game. But meanwhile, they got my attention. Yeah. Definitely, absolutely. And after the demo, they got as we predicted. I don't I don't know if you did as well, but I I, I remember I did. 
Crash coming back. Oh, yeah. Yes. I predict Crash coming back, and it's happening. Yeah, I had Spyro coming back. Not a new game, but remasters yeah. from mm -hmm. the... I, I don't know what they mean with remasters or remakes, whatever. From the ground up, they yeah. did say that. Sean mm -hmm. did say that. Crash 1, 2, and Warp, the first trilogy yeah. mm -hmm. of Crash. The, the, the first three games of, of the Crash series <coughs> are coming to the PS4. Yeah. Which are great Remastered games. or remade, I don't know, yeah. from the mm -hmm. ground up. I'm on board with that. Yeah. I know many people expected a new game, a, a new game I'm in the series. In that, you, you're yeah. in that camp. Mm -hmm. But that also, I mean, remasters... Or nothing, remasters, right? That's right, yeah. Right? And, have I, and, and I think, and I do think that if they do well, that sets a precedent for a new game. Absolutely. Right? New game. Absolutely, yeah. I'm on board with that, and I, I like that, and I and I, I was I was very happy with the thing. Lego Star Wars, The Force Awakens, looks cool. It's, um, it's a Lego game. It's a Lego game. There are a lot of those. Yeah, I, but I, also, I know there are good games. They're fair, they're decent games. And Star Wars. It's Star Wars, yeah. right? That, that was the, the thing with, I mean, I... I've heard. I haven't played them. I haven't played any. I think no, any of the Lego games of any any franchise. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know that you know the general consensus on them is that they're very good. Yeah. But I saw this and I saw the you know the the, the glimpses of gameplay that they showed, and I I felt like it was Star Wars, but they took all the magic out of it in really? some way. Yeah. I I felt like they made a disservice with yeah really? with okay. with what they showed at least I. Didn't quite like it. I I think they they try to force so many comedic moments there that were not necessary and that oh, okay. took yeah. away from you know okay. the actual moments okay. that we're okay. portraying. So I don't know. I I was not much into it, but I mean yeah. it's yeah. probably not. I'm not probably the audience that they're right. targeting, right? So I, yeah, Legos always been more comedic in mm -hmm. many ways. So yeah, that's why for reviews. Maybe it could be a good game. Maybe yeah. bad. It's course. coming in a week. More or less. Yeah, yeah, in so June twenty eighth. In a week. Yeah. yeah. So wow, that's coming very very soon. Then, <laughs> ooh, yes, my emotional highlight of the entire E3. Right. So Andrew House comes on stage and talks about partnering with the most amazing, the creative yeah. minds, and he says, "So let's welcome one of them, right?" And then. The curtain opens. Yeah. <laughs> and this big badass music starts playing. Yeah. Like, what, 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 what? And then you see the Kojima production logo and Kojima walking down on the stairs of, of L lights. Of, of uh, yeah. LEDs <laughs> walking down so badass. Yeah. And yeah, I, yeah. I was hyperventilating that moment. I was like, yeah, because I'm a big Kojima fan. And that yeah. was so cool. And I was watching that with my dad. We were both super excited about that. We were. Oh my god! Oh my god! Is this is real? Kojima is on stage at E3 right now, <laughs> yeah. and as he said, I'm back. Yeah, <laughs> people went crazy with that, and I think the idea yes. of having him after what Konami did to him with uh with the award, the Game Award last awards, year, yeah. mm -hmm. and just Sony just letting him giving him the spotlight that he couldn't have on the Game Awards, that was so cool. That was yeah. such a That's... for me. It was it, it for me even. I know it was a PR thing, but it was even a nice gesture from Sony to do that to Kojima, giving him the spotlight that he right. deserves. And once also. Yeah. That was so cool. And then they showed um, the trailer for his new project, which, let's be fair, it's just a long way yeah. from being yeah, yeah, even released, even playable. Mm -hmm. But Norman Reedus is back. Yeah. The trailer Confirmed. looks so disturbing in many ways. Yeah. So symbolic mm -hmm. so surreal and i loved every second of it right i love the trailer mm -hmm. even if it's even if it's not necessarily a game trailer it's more of a concept trailer maybe yeah mm -hmm. but it's in game in engine i mean i'm into that and i'm excited yeah i don't even know what it is but i'm excited yeah yeah i agree i i i did mention to you that i'm i mean i'm very excited by the prospect of having yeah. kojima back and having him have the, the spotlight I think it's a very nice gesture too. Yeah. Uh, about the game, I I still have to wait and see because yeah. I mean uh, we know next to nothing about yeah. it other than Reed is being in it in it and it being a very you know psychological thing. I wouldn't be as I told you surprised at all to see that they announce uh, Guillermo del Toro is involved with it in, in some so. way. Yeah, uh, so cool. and yeah, I want to see more of the game for me to get excited. I yeah. want to be excited about this game, but so far I don't see much. Uh, to you know, to really pump me up. To I, I, I still know nothing about the game. I do know that it has potential. Yeah, a, lo a lot of potential. A lot definitely. of potential. Yeah, we're excited for that, and mm -hmm. 
I can wait to see more of Me this too. of this title. Me too. Of this title, not soon, definitely, but in two, three years, I don't know. All right. It's, it's, it's a nice thing. Spider Man coming to the PS4. Yeah. I, it's cool. I, That's cool. I mean, as a as a Spider Man fan, That's I cool. I think it's very nice. Uh, I do think that I, I want to wait and see because the last Spider Man games, you know, the recent Spider Man yeah. games, have been very bad. Mm, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, so I want this to be at least this is Platinum games. So uh, if they do know how to make their stuff, yeah. and I think it's interesting to see it's an exclusive Spider Man game. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, um, I, I think it's awesome. there could be potential. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's see how they they do. Yeah. Then Sony goes their conference with what is, in my opinion, a kind of underwhelming demo of Days um, Gone of their IP. Climatic, yeah. It was. Uh, I I don't think it looked unique, nor interesting, nor good at all. It was just a dude running from a ch- ton of zombies. Yeah. It may be a fun game, but the demo, I don't, I don't, I don't think it was the right. It the conference was just so hype, 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 and I think it goes on a down yeah. for me and uh, I did mention to you that I thought it was like Days Gone was a, a like a lie like a dud yeah. and that they were gonna end up that demo with it yeah here's the Days Gone and too. oh it's not Days Gone yeah. it's Last of Us 2 or something, like something like that I was expecting that surprise and indeed the surprise never came I, I didn't see anything that made it unique or interesting to me at yeah. all and I think that also put some uh, truth to the rumor that they intended to close with Red Dead Redemption 2. Right. But you did they... mention something to me about that. Yeah, so there was a rumor that Sony actually was... Uh, they, they were going to close the conference with Red Dead Redemption 2. Yes. And with a demo, with a live gameplay demo. But on that demo, there was a scene where they were in a salon, in a bar. Yeah. And people... And someone entered in, in, ran through the salon and started shooting. Yeah. So, because of what the tragedy that just happened at Orlando, yeah. at a bar, at a nightclub, I mean, they yeah, it, it, it was a bit sensitive to do that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it was a bit wrong in a sense. So they had to cut that at the last moment and put this instead. Right. It makes sense because it didn't look, it it this demo didn't look like it was intended to be there at that moment, and also having a game shown and then shown again on the conference right. for it's Sony. Odd. It's odd. So mm-hmm. yeah, that could be that could be it could be very true. I mean it's it's all rumors, right? Mm-hmm. I mean we, right. we don't Absolutely. know if that's the case. And it's not unprecedented. I mean Bethesda did the same thing with Dishonored. Yeah. Uh but yeah it's a not thing to show a game that not many people people would be I right. mean Dishonored had its hype and mm-hmm. Days Gone was just announced. So I Absolutely. mean it, it made little to no sense. And but yeah, yeah, I mean, it's likely if if that's the scenario. But be, being fair, being fair with Sony and uh, and the studio Sony Band, the game it, looks good. I mean, it's it's we haven't seen anything, so let's right. wait and see. Maybe maybe yeah. it's a masterpiece in the yeah. making, right? So Could let's be. wait and see. Let's wait and see. Now let's jump to uh, the last, last thing of E three and uh, very quickly Nintendo, Nintendo, Nintendo. <laughs> um, they came with mostly one game. Yeah, and so so, so Nintendo came with one bullet but it was man such an accurate yeah. bullet yeah right so they didn't have a, they didn't have a conference per se they had a stream it was reggie speaking and then they showed a trailer mm-hmm. the that trailer for the, the new legend of zelda now called the legend of zelda breath of the wild of the, the wild. trailer looks so goddamn beautiful yeah the trailer looks beautiful and then Everybody was okay. Wait, let, let's see more. Let's see the stream. Let's watch game live gameplay. Let's go to a treehouse live. And then they jumped to the stream with Pokemon Sun and Moon. <laughs> yeah, half an hour of Pokemon Sun and Moon. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'm a Pokemon fan. I like Pokemon, yeah. but that was such <laughs> yeah weird ass move. Bad. You know, I, I don't want to sound too dirty, but that was like you you know how I I felt. I had like a blue balls of gaming. Right, because yeah. I was so excited for something that right. uh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. no, and I had to sit there for thirty minutes watching the same game I've been playing for fifteen years. Yes, with just some improvements, small improvements, for me to finally be able to watch Zelda, and um, and also waiting for them to set up stuff because it was already talking. There's, then there's a trainer, and then oh, wait a few minutes until we set up. Come on, yeah. just have that ready. Exactly. That yes. was awful. So, in my opinion, Nintendo had the worst showing. Agreed. Out of all in many many years, yes. it was it was bad. It was awful. 
it was awful the way they showed they showed the stream they showed the game and they didn't have a conference so they just randomly throughout the throughout the stream during all three days they just randomly popped out some announcements yeah like mario party star rush coming for the 3ds Okay, <laughs> I don't think anybody asked for that. Yeah, and most people didn't even get to see the announcement. Exactly, but okay, could be nice. Okay, yeah. Then they showed some Paper Mario Color Splash. Yeah. Okay, they gotta. I mean, a lot of potential on Paper Mario. Still, I don't think it's gonna be that Paper Mario that we're looking forward to. Mm-mm. Monster Hunter Generations that looks awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Monster Hunter, Monter right. Hunter is, 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 is um, guaranteed success, yes, definitely. Yes, of course. But Lane of Salaman, that looks... I wow. think it stole the show. It, it You know, media-wise, game-wise, game-wise yeah. the game just wrecked through everything else announced and the entire E3. The game was talked about in The longest lines at E3. Yes, too. And, I mean, you can see why. The game looks very different to what we're used yeah. to with Zelda. Uh, the game has so many different things that we're not... I mean, even voice so acting, many, right? So, so many different systems. Yes, on top of the each open other. world, the map, the, the, you know, tower, almost like uh, Assassin's Creed-like uh, map discovery system, so the tablet, big the, game, the bigness world. of the game, the, uh, you know, collectibles you have now to have. You have different weapons that you can yeah. use, it not looks just like, a fixed uh, one. It looks like the original Zelda for the NES, yeah. but now made... On 3D and bigger. Yes. It looks just like that. And if if that's the case, I'm sold. Yeah. I'm definitely. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah I agree. Game. I just really hope that they can fill the, all that voids with content and yeah. that they... That's that's my issue with uh, what I saw. It looks so empty. Yeah. So empty. And I'm a bit worried about that. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm I'm fine with games having emptiness in them. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think there's a necessity of emptiness in every game. You cannot yeah. just have enemies everywhere. Absolutely, yeah. But right. there's also a limit to that. Mm-hmm. You cannot just have this empty world with... Nothing you know, to do. A couple of... Exactly, with nothing to do. With a couple of, of camps every now and then, with two or three enemies in each, like... Secret, little but more. secret entrances yeah, here and there. Exactly. But, I don't know. Destroy. Have have like a secret cave beneath a rock yeah. that you may never move or destroy. Exactly. And if you do that. There's then, a secret cave. Exactly. And there's a mini dungeon. Yeah. There, right. And you might find a cool weapon down there. Exactly. A cool pick of a loot or something. Yeah. Do, I, that, I, ca- do that kind of stuff. It looks a lot like an RPG, uh, sort of yeah. uh, Witcher style. Uh-huh. Now you can change clothes and the, uh, uh, everything you pick up has an has attributes, has stats. Yeah. And it's more robust in that way and I'm all for that so yeah I think in terms of games The Legend of Zelda stole E3 yeah. and it was the most searched game on the internet of throughout course, yeah. E3 by far oh of course by far so the yeah it was Nintendo they had another one I mean showing but also they had the most impressive game and yeah. the most talk about games so it, it, it's weird it's right? a very it, it, bittersweet it, yeah thing with Nintendo it's weird but also this shows that Nintendo can do stuff yeah right. yeah exactly just do more of this exactly and that's yes. it yeah it's, right? it's not that hard Nintendo it really isn't absolutely so I think in terms of games Zelda is the clear winner yeah the clear, the clear winner of everything yeah. in Still terms of conferences that's Sony yeah, I, I had, agree. So Sony had, had the best conference and Nintendo had the best game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's E3, basically. Um, wow. Yeah. That's E3 for you guys. That's E3 for you. Yeah. It's... Yeah, Pokemon looks nice. Same, same thing as always. Mario Party Star Rush looks mm, different. Yeah. In many ways, I think that's nice that they're trying new ideas. But I do think that they do not need to try new ideas. I think that they just need to go back to Mario Party 1, 2, 3. Yeah. Go that exactly. to that, and that's all they need yeah. for a con- for a home console. Not, yeah, not that's console. all people want, and that's all they need. They, mm-hmm. I think, they need to try new ideas for that. Exactly. And it's odd to me that they're having a second Mario Party game on the same handle. Yeah. So I don't know. Nintendo has weird decisions. Sometimes. Yeah. Paper yeah, yeah. Mario Color Splash. I'm, uh, I'm out looking just, underwhelming. I, I just wait for reviews, and if it's anything similar to Paper Mario on the GameCube, I'm on board. If it's not, I'm waiting for a huge price drop. If it ever happens, right? If it ever, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's it. Um, Overall, I think E3 was solid this yeah. year. I don't think it was that disappointing as, no, as no. people thought it could have been. I think no, there no, was no. a very nice surprises there. Was Last most year's of them were solid. was better. I think was more pumped. Yeah, was, had had more surprises. More surprises, yeah. Mm-hmm. But this year had a lot of 
have Sony's conference was awesome. Yeah, I think Zelda. overall, all uh, except Nintendo, obviously, uh, had solid conferences. Yeah. I don't think like last year, uh, Square Enix was awful, oh. god awful. EA, EA was, was terribly awful. boring. Yeah, uh, you know, etc. Right? This year, everyone has a like had a had good a one, one. Yeah. had a, a decent uh, showing. So I think that's better. I mean, even the, lesser even, prices, yeah. more quality overall. Even the worst conference this year, which was I think either EA or Ubisoft. Yeah. I would incline to Ubisoft. And, 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 and even that, it was good. Yeah, it exactly. Wasn't bad. Exactly. So, yeah, definitely, de definitely a good, a good show. And yeah. looking forward to all of these games. Quickly, games coming out uh, in yeah. these days. Mm -hmm. Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games coming for the Wii U. Yeah. Okay. Not interested, really. No. no but no, it's no. It, it's fine. It's something for the Wii U, right? Yeah. Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Fire Emblem. It's a crossover between Shin Megami Tensei and Fire Emblem. Yeah. It's finally coming for the Wii U. It's a niche title, definitely. But I thought coming... that was already out, though. No, it's coming it's out. Just coming out. Yeah. So it's finally something nice to, to have. Yeah. A game called Seven Days to Die. So I haven't heard anything of this. For PS4 and Xbox One. I think it was already on PC. Now it's coming for PS4 and Xbox One. Okay. okay. Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens. It's coming next week. Well, it's less than a week from now yeah. coming out for everything everything yeah for including last gen absolutely everything huh, okay? interesting a game called Prison Architect which is a sort of a um not a niche but a very interesting title that has its following on PC mm, yeah coming for PS4 and Xbox One a very fun game to play yeah very I've fun heard, game I've to heard play. that I have good things about that game yes. Resident Evil 5 coming now to PS4 and Xbox One okay coming remastered to the PS4 and Xbox One you can play that one could be nice Terraria is after many years coming to the Wii U <laughs> yeah Okay? Yeah. If you haven't played and you only own an internal console, that's something that's to look forward a, to. Yeah, exactly. And inside coming to the Xbox One. Yeah, that's an exclusive, right? And absolutely, yes. Yeah. Okay. And that's it. And what have you been playing? I've been playing not much because I wasn't on vacation, yeah. right? <laughs> but uh, even man. then, yeah, I know. I, I, I have such a bad time there enjoying myself and E3 and, and some nice sightings at the beach. Um. It was good. It was a good, good, good week. But uh, gaming wise, I what I've done, I played a little bit of uh, Fallout, mm -hmm. very little. I played Super Meat Boy. Uh, the game came, uh, you know, free games with gold game of last month, okay. and it's a very, very fun game to play. I really love that. Very difficult, right? Very difficult game. Awesome. Yeah, very difficult, and that's cool. It's a challenging game. Awesome. Uh, and uh, The Witcher Three, I played a little bit of, of, you know, continuing playing the Hearts of Stone expansion, uh, and I'm still ways off um, very very far from finishing it uh, but I, I'll keep playing it and then move cool. on to when uh, Blood, and Blood and Wine yeah. awesome mm -hmm. awesome what great you? I played um, Witcher 3 as well I'm playing yeah. Blood and Wine expansion still I don't know 5% of, of, <laughs> of, of the expansion <laughs> right. done it's it's a freaking big expansion and I, I haven't had much time at all to play as I wished I played that I played Mario Party 4 oh I played that since I don't know it's been a long time since, since I last played and I played that uh, with a friend. Um, I also played Banjo Tui again with a friend. Mm, cool. As a multiplayer, and I cool. played Hunter's Legacy. Oh, our nice! Game, yeah, our, our game yeah, development. Yeah. Cool, 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 I, cool. I, I did. I did a full playthrough of the game, start to finish. Nice. It's uh, for some testing stuff. It's yeah. um, it's it's. I had a lot of fun with it. Definitely, definitely. We will talk about that later on our occasion. Yes. More in depth. In depth. And um, if you guys want to try it out, uh, there's a demo on Steam. On Steam, yeah, Hunter's Legacy on Steam available. Yeah, we can add free a, demo a link in the description. Available now. And I played um, the Resident Evil Seven demo. Oh, that, yeah. yeah, cool, nice. And I got scared. Yeah, I, and that's basically. I, I would assume <laughs> that's that's basically it. that's it for this nice. week's episode, guys and girls. Thank you so much for watching the show on YouTube or listening on iTunes, SoundCloud, and tune in. If you enjoyed your time with us, please. Like the video, subscribe to Gaming Frontier on YouTube, share it with your friends if you like. We appreciate all of your support as always. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we expect you uh, next week. Expect an, a new episode next week, uh, episode 20. Uh, a shorter episode. A shorter uh, episode, uh, absolutely. I mean, this one's granted it's E3 yeah. uh, um, show, so it's it's. I think it's it's okay for it to be a little longer. Uh, but yeah, next week is gonna be a regular episode. We're yeah. gonna talk maybe a little more about a couple games here and there that we didn't, didn't uh, go in depth uh, about in this show, or maybe a couple cut topics and all the news that are still gonna be coming this week and next. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. Thank you very much. See you next week. You can always reach us on Twitter at underscore Gaming Frontier and on Facebook. 
Facebook as Gaming Frontier at facebook.com slash Gaming Frontier Entertainment. If you have any questions you'd like us to answer on the show, you can send an email to gamingfrontier.contact at gmail.com. As always, we'd like to thank Tecnologico de Monterrey and Mr. Isaac Estrella for making this possible. Head over to our channel and watch more stuff like reviews yeah. and that kind of things. And um, thank you so much for watching again. Remember, guys, always, always keep playing. Keep playing, guys. See you next week.